in the middle of the track is Arn. Coming down to the final 16th, it is Stan Pat in front. Arn. Arn. Arn in front, coming down to the wire. My wife knows everything. The wife doesn't know. They're one, two. Of course they are. My wife knows everything in front. Sitting outside, the wife doesn't know. My wife knows everything. The wife doesn't know. My wife knows everything. More than the wife doesn't know. Welcome to the Bastards Inquiry. Yes, it's yeehaw time. It's the Breeders' Cup. It's our dedicated show this weekend. We're not doing one for the shitty weather racing back in the UK. We're dedicating this entire show to the Breeders' Cup at Santa Anita over the two days where we're fortunate enough, actually, to get some ITV coverage on both evenings. Never a guarantee, but they're covering the Friday from nine o'clock right through to 11.40 on ITV3. And then on Saturday, they're starting with the Breeders' Cup Mile at 6.30. So that's a full night's entertainment going right through to the Breeders' Cup Sprint, is it? Very last race, the 11.59. I didn't think they ever covered after the the Breeders' Cup chat. They've had a rejig this year. I don't don't quite agree with it myself. Yeah, the classic always used to be the last one on, didn't Mm. it? Yeah, Yeah. notice the timings. Interesting indeed. Right, okay. Right, so plenty to get through. And as usual, the format is the same as all Friday shows. So myself, Jack, Nick and John will be giving our best bets. That's one, two and three points for the two-day Breeders' Cup card. And hopefully we're going to find some gems for you because we're all absolutely enthusiastic about this. In private chats, I can tell you that this should be a good show. So without further ado, let's get on with it. This is the best bets round. One pointer, Jack Veach, what we're saying? What we're saying, Lee, right, well, look, this weekend is is big for me. I'm looking forward to it. I've just cracked open a uh, Sierra Nevada pale ale from Northern California to get myself in the spirit. (laughs) The lucky charms are in the pantry for tomorrow morning. We're ready to go. So we're kicking things off the nine o'clock tomorrow, uh, our time, which is the turf sprint for the juveniles. And I'm against the top of the market here. I think think there's going to be, I mean, look, there's a lot of pace on the top three. Big Evs, Crimson Advocate and No Name Mets. I think they're all speed balls who are going to take each other on look i'd love to see mick get a winner here with, with big evs but i think he's i think he's probably priced right and also with all due respect to him it's his first ever runner here prep is really important when you're looking at these kind of races and are they just chancing their arm and thinking oh look he's had a good season let's go for it fair enough to them but enough for me to be against him tomorrow so i'm with one of the european raiders but he's a little bit down in the market and that's the uh, jesse harrington train give me the beat boys so he's drawn five, which is very much near the, the, the pace as noted. And, and he has the issue with him is he's broke quite badly on last couple starts. You can't afford to do that around here. But I don't necessarily want him up with those three. I'd just like them to get out nice and clean and, and sit off the pace. And, and I think the key to him is, is quick ground. Connections have pulled him out three times when it's been softer than good. Listen to them earlier in the week and they said, you know, they've, they've really had this race in mind for a while. He's had a light-ish campaign with this in mind. And, and you look at the pick of his form. He was fourth in the... Um, Coventry the stiff six was a bit much for him you, you know half furlong off that he'd have won took the, he led the race and, and just got collared late on and similar story in the middle park and, and finished in three lengths behind Van Dijk Task Force and River Tiber who's favourite for the uh, turf mile juvenile is, is not bad at all <clears throat> so I think the drop back to five will, will really suit I think the ground will be spot on for him I think he's drawn well and I think he's overpriced so one point win give me the beat boys 11 to 1 available with Paddy Power and Betfair. Quality stuff, Jack, there. I, I like your reasoning. And I also think the fast ground is key mm. with him. I, th- I think faster the better. He'd, he'd run on a wall. That awesome show his form. So good stuff there. I like that. Right. Quentin Frank is not on this show, but he's got selections for you. So that's the good news. Quentin uh, taking a break from Bastards Pods, but I did urge him to get some selections for this. His first tip is one that of a very big price indeed. Goes in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. Going against you, Jack, with shards at 40 to 1, one point win. And he says, pace, pace, and more pace looks on the cards here. Big Evs is light out fast from the gates, but faces competition for the lead from the inside and outside. I can see this being run at a searching gallop, and with a possible pace collapse on the cards, I'm happy to take a flyer on one at a pry. The horse in question is shards. 
I, I can't let him for three at 40 to one. To my eye, he's a steadily improving sprinter from an unfashionable yard that has been overlooked in the market here. Given his price, of course, there's negatives, most notably the half furlong drop in trip. But as mentioned, I can see this race being run at a furious pace and having stamina for this trip and beyond should be no bad thing. His last run in the Indian summer was full of promise. Whilst the race suitor closes this day, there was no doubt in my mind that without troubling running on a couple of occasions, he would have gone close to beating the reopposing amidst waves and committee of one, who are both shorter prices here. I felt he should be at least half his odds. So 40 to 1 for Quentin, one point win on Shards in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Sprint, 9 o'clock Friday. So that's Quentin and Jack done. Quentin obviously going against Jack in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Sprint. Head to head there. And come to you, Nick, for your one-pointer. We're going on Saturday to the Breeders' Cup Mile. And this is totally price-related. Run through this race, I think. Uh, Master C out in 14. Got a lot to do from there. Song line, song lines, to- form at Tokyo, two one 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 five one two one. Outside Tokyo, one oh three oh oh five, and that was at seven furlongs where she scraped past. He scraped past Casa Creed and Happy Romance of Hannon. I don't know outside of a backyard that she will win. Purely on price, I'm going to go at forty to one with the last year's runner-up. He was uh, beaten by. Uh, Master of the Seas last time, but if you look at that race, sat in front of Master of the Seas, and then when Master of the Seas made it run, it was a half-hearted run. The also question is Shell Sprite, it was a runner-up to Modern Games. That's an absolutely massive price here. Uh, the way I'm going to play the race, I'm, I'm going to play that each way. Not They'll both be on this bet, but I'm going to sting in some exactors with Morge and Kalina. But the main bet is a half point each way, Shell Sprite. Mm, half point each way at 40s. That's with the 365 Paddies and Betfair. And it's four places, one fifth the odds. Right. For Bailey Bonters, the extra place there might come in rather handy. Thank you, Nick. And some lovely big prices to start here. Liking this. John? I'm starting off in the turf sprint, the five furlong job of the, um, 11.25 on Saturday night. Yes. Now, I'm a failing against our two. I thought Living the Green made a fair start out there when Kiran didn't really say much for the finish and he got nutted closer. I thought, I thought that was an okay effort, but I still have a bit of a doubt about how good our sprint form is. The one I like is the well drawn septic, Caravel, who he's made a habit of winning, really. I mean, for me, he's one disappointing one was on softer ground. He won this last year. I think he's. Price is banging the fun zone, really. Caravel for me all day long. I think it'll be run to so Half a point each way. Can't kick him out the three. Again, half a point each way for John. That's 15 to 2 generally available on Caravel. And as I say, you get the bonus of the four places. So, some nice prices to start. We've had 40s from Quentin, 12s from Jack. What was yours? That Yours was 40s, wasn't it? Yep. And a 15 to 2 chance from John. Will I let the side down with a shitty short price one? No, I won't. I'm going in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf tomorrow evening over the mile, where the lovely Carla's way heads the market 100 to 30. Nothing not to like about her, possibly except the price. And I know for a fact that John Lang, who's loved her from the start, wouldn't have probably come here. Yeah, right. So that's a reason for me to sidestep Carla's way and go for a little bit of value. I think this is well overpriced. A, a lovely filly, this. A pancake filly. She's got four white socks. One of them that all the women love and all back on the US Turks. So I don't back on US Turks. They'll love Gala Brand in the paddock. She's 18 to 1. She's trained by Bill Mott, which, you know, I'm not really a fan of Eastern Seaboard horses coming over to the West Coast, but, but that applies to dirt rather than turf. If you go through the stats over the years, it's more dirt horses that don't really transfer the form rather than the turf horses. So that doesn't worry me. Now, what's eye-catching about this was she beat Carson's run on debut. And I thought it was a very impressive thing to do, taking on the boys and beating the boys first time up. Carson's run subsequently come out and won the Grade 1 Summer Stakes at Woodbine. So the form is absolutely cock solid. And the reason she got beat last time, 
at Belmont at the Big Apple. She was held up off a funereal pace. I got the sectionals for that, and she couldn't win. She could, she was the only horse to close. She was beaten four lengths by one of the rivals, hard to justify. You can absolutely put that in the bin. They went something like 51 seconds for the half. It was just absolutely stupid for a grade two like that. So Gala Brand is coming into this, I know for a fact, in really good form, Nick, because... Nick, I took one of your tips and I looked at the clockers report. Was it Mike? Mike, Mike Welsh. Mike Welsh, that's it. And, and he was very positive about her. He said he really loved her, loved her moving the clockers report earlier in the week. So with that in mind to boot, then everything looks right. Stall seven's fine. She will be dropped in. Uh, the pace looks okay for, for her. I, I do think that she's going to run big. And 18 to 1, I bet 20s was available. Sadly, that's gone. Uh, it always does for me. I can't even have 18s either. Bastard. 16 to 1 generally available. I'll have to take that. And I'm going to go one point on the nose because I believe that if, if there's a pace, she'll go very close. If there isn't, she won't place. It's one of them things. That's my long shot. What a first round, chaps. Impressive. Do they have Impressive. Deed Pearl facilities in America? Deed Pearl? Why? Yeah. Well, you'd think Bill Matt would get busy, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good old Bill Mott. I saw an interview earlier this week with one of the UK journalists, and I was quite impressed by how he come across. Really, I think I'd have an old train by him. I like Bill Mott. Oh, would you go for Silver Ed Bob, John? I'd probably go for Dwayne Lucas and pretend it's Bob. Then it solves me conscience a bit. Say about <laughs> certain aspects of the game. You wouldn't have one with Bingo then. No. <laughs> He's not even got a runner on the mat. He might have one in the turf sprint, but um, yeah, he's well, really... He's getting really... ready for Ascot, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's <laughs> shit there now as well. I think he's had his, no, had his he's fun. He's not getting them ready. <laughs> <laughs> round two, two pointers. John, I'll swing it round to you. I'm, uh, I'm in the Phillies and Mares turf over Jeez. 10. I thought in Italian was the pace angle. There's maybe others going forward as well. Sev Rover. You'll probably be familiar to scaffold the fans over here. <laughs> quite, quite consistent now, actually, over there. Warm Heart is really interesting for me. I think she does the best travelling through races on quick ground. She, she absolutely crows through that Yorkshire Oaks. And I felt a little bit, a finishing effort, just gave me an inkling she could be better at 10 with a, a good pace on. Crows for a mile and then put it to bed sort of thing. I think she's probably got Lumiere Rock and maybe in spiral if she gets home to beat, but I, I really like Warm Heart here at, at the 10 on, uh, on this sort of ground. I, th- I think it'll really suit her. Two points win. Mm, like it. Two points win. Three to one with Labrooks Bet365 and Coral. For John in the Phillies and Mare Turf, I will come on to Mr Franks now for his two-pointer. And he goes in the Breeders' Cup sprint. He's very keen on Speed Boat Beach here. And he's saying two points win at 11 to 2. He says he's, this is more like a 3 to 1 shot. He says whilst he wants to be against horses that are on the pace on turf, in the dirt races he wants to be on the pace. And the Breeders' Cup sprint has a distinct lack of pace on the cards. He thinks this will get the right ride. He says he's not sure that Elite Power will have the right setup at all and looks very short at the top of the market for one that hasn't raced on a West Coast dirt track. So Speed Boat Beach for Quentin, two points win, 11 or two. Jacka. Patreon subscribers, readers will, will know I like this horse a lot, all, all three of the people that read my uh, anti-post column. But I'm going to double down here because the price is held, which I'm surprised by. Um, and the horse I'm referring to here is the uh, Bob Baffert, Wiley Bob trained Prince of Monaco in tomorrow's Dirt Juvenile at 11 o'clock. Um, I mean, look, I made the case on, on Patreon, but I'll run through it again. Um, it, it's a four horse race. You know, you've got four horses. They're all priced within a point or two of each other. But looking through through the other runners locked i thought was a very labored winner of the champagne um or sorry not the champagne but a grade one last time out at uh, keeneland when beating the wine steward who's a 14 to 1 poke here and, and I, I thought that was disappointing really so i wouldn't have him favorite timberlake uh, put up a very good performance winning the champagne at belmont um, but that was on 
very sloppy ground and I thought he seemed to, to really excel on that and, and conditions tomorrow are polar opposite here. So that would be a negative for me. And then Prince of Monaco, um, he beat Muth, who who's shorter than him in the market and put up the buyer figure of the season, um, 103 on the clock, which is five points better than anything else, uh, albeit that was over six furlongs. The trip here is probably the only negative for the horse. He's not tried not tried and tested over a, uh, a an extended mile, but there is the two turns. I think he should be absolutely fine. I like his prep into the race. I've given him a bit of time off. Flavian Pratt's probably one of the best around here. I like his gait in two. I, I think there's a lot to like here, and, and I'm very much surprised he's still kind of floating around the 5-1, to 11-2 to two mark. I'd have him clear favourite. So, yeah, very strong two-point win, Prince of Monaco. That's 11-2 with the old Labrooks and Joe Coral there for Silverhead Bob. What's not to like? He'll get the juice. Yes, that's what we all want, exactly. some juice. Indeed. My two-pointer goes in the 8.30 race on Saturday night, the Breeders' Cup, mile, turf, mile. And I am going to take on Nick's selection here with the Japo song line. I think on the numbers, I, I subscribe to several US publications they put her right on a par with master of the seas and i don't think master of the seas will get a nice run here at all i think a lot of times the japanese sort of ship to to the us they outrun their figures a little bit read into that what you will and i think this is a very strong contender there's doubts about certain horses in this for me as i said i mentioned master of the seas i just felt that Songline really did come in here with the right sort of preparation I want and a nice break. And yeah, nothing not to like at seven or two. So that was my second choice. I didn't like Morge because Nick, I'm coming back to you. You might mention it later, but he said Morge worked terribly. Yeah, that was over the dirt though. That was Yeah, they've been working on the dirt, haven't they, all the time? Yeah. Curious that. That is very curious, yeah. Yeah, obviously with carrots in, I mean who knows, but by the way, the Japs folks. They've done not just so well, like in their own. Obviously, they've got the world's best racehorse at the moment, Equinox. Their raiding parties are doing well. Australia, the Cox Plate, Maidan, the US, they, they are winning everywhere, John. Jack, Nick. And mm. that Jack restaurant in Middlesbrough is doing very well as well. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's more like it, John. That's where we need the show to go. Yeah, so a song line for me to finish that one off. Nick, you can now. Tell us your two-point bets. Right, I'm going for the Breeders' Cup turf. It, the price has gone a little bit, but it's still about in the thing. I'm going to go with Ernesto. I think there's so many negatives. I'm prepared to see August Rodan win if he thinks, but he's he can he can throw in one. Mostadaf with Jim Crowley's an accident waiting to happen. I'm surprised <laughs> the Tory's still on King of Steel here. He's a massive horse, isn't he? I think the last place I want to run him is the, the course at Santa Anita. They're saying up to the mark is the best one since Bricks and Mortar. Did you ever see that race, that Breeders' Cup Bricks and Mortar one? It was probably one of the worst Breeders' Cup turfs I've ever seen. I think that Anthony Van Dyke was in third there. And, uh, and I, Ginger nothing Hitler back there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> 11 to 8. Yeah, yeah, sure. I thought Ernesto's running. There's two runs. The, the run in Paris and... Last year, if you look go back, look on the slightly unlucky run in the in the over the Japan Cup over there. He's had he's had a perfect prep in that he's he hasn't had a long season. I don't think uh, this year. Um, his suit's coming from behind here over the mile and a half. I'd like I like to see if sunk with a kick at the end of it, and I think he's got that kick. Um, with enough doubts about the, the top of the market, so as I said, I'm preferably. O'Brien, Augusta, Rodan can do it, and they might have one of its funny days. You don't know, but I think the the price of what seven to one is is seven to one, maybe thirteen to two, seven to one, thirteen to two, two points win. I think that's that'll do me well in this race. Fifteen to two. Oh right, I've got yeah. I've got two rule books here. Yeah, <laughs> Ill's bet three six five. Yeah, quality selection, Nick, to finish the two point. Round off, this is your lucky 15 round, isn't it? Yeah, this is the one that you can mix and match here, but certainly these are our best bets. Looking forward to this round. I'll kick us off with Quentin. His three points win goes mm. in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. It is Tamara. That's 21.40 tomorrow. Tamara is well clear on the clock against this field, he says. Looks a class apart against this bunch. 
She won the debutante in some style, readily clearing away to win in a smart figure. Safe to say, I'm surprised she's not more of an 8-13, to 4-7 perk. Some have expressed doubts about her going two bends, but she's bred to do the job. Her damn beholder won this back in 2012 before winning the distaff, and if anything, she'll improve the step-up in trip. We've got a second favourite in Candid that used to change legs in the straight, something she won't get away with in this company. There's been a few negative gallop reports for Tamara. This has meant she has started to take a slide in the market. I'm happy to put them to the back of my head and trust what I've seen on the track to date. Three points win, says Quentin, at the 11 to 10 available, I believe. Quentin's like never endery price pinches. 11 to 10 with Coral and Labrooks is true after some negative Gallup reports. Interesting, interesting start to the round. Okay, so... Nick, where are you going with your big bet? Amazing, it's in a two-year-old race. Wow. I'm going to go... Whoa. Say, yes. Whoa, oh, yeah. And I'm going to go <laughs> completely against everyone. This I'm, I'm imposing Quentin and Jack here. They keep saying the... Uh, oh, this is too much pace in this race. This isn't Keeneland. This isn't anywhere else. This is Santa Anita. Just watch the 2019 Juvenile Turf, the 2019 Turf Sprint Gate to Pug. Go and go. They they go all the way there. I'm against Big Evs. Uh, Big Evs did a faster time than my selection. My collection is Crimson Advocate, and I'm going to tell you why. He was only Big Evs, only slightly faster than Crimson Advocate. Only nine tenths quicker or something, wasn't it? Uh, nine hundred. No, but Crimson Advocate, alas, got he ran to uh, ninety-eight percent, hundred percent Big Evs. Crimson and over the first three furlongs were 0.39 fast, Ooh. which is a quite a little thing. Uh, no name Mets, uh, Crimson Advocate was a lot faster than that. I think Crimson Advocate goes around in about 21.50, the first two furlongs, goes around that bend. Did Big Evs pack it up when he got, uh, uh, when he gets headed, does he pack it up? Because at Nunthorpe, that was it. Don't tell me it was the oldie horse's excuse. It was beat after about 200 yards. So I think Crimson Advocate goes out there, makes all. I'd make him 9-4 to four and Big Evs 9-2. to two. I, The 5-1's to one's gone in Crimson Advocate, but I would go Crimson Advocate. On my figures, I've got he should get to the bend quicker. If he gets around, I don't want him to do something stupid like... Uh, the baby Joseph did on Star Spangled Banner in that uh, Breeders' Cup sprint. 1974, he went. I had a 20-to-1 winner and a double with that, and I wasn't pleased. I think if he goes around in 21-20 to 21-40, the thing from the outside, slider could could go uh, very fast as well, but if you watched that one try in a corner last time out, you won't want to be with it. It no. did a 21-20, but you, you watched that call. It didn't take the bend at all. So I think Crimson Advocate... Gets out there, makes all. I can see something coming from behind a challenge, but the trouble is with Big Evs and No Name Mets, they're going to have to go very wide to get past the three or few of them to get to them. So I think this makes all. The speed of the speed wins. The speed of the speed, Nick. I like. It. Are you happy? Three points win. Four to one yeah, general. Three. Yep. Three on the nose for Crimson Advocate and a very strong case made there from Nick. Quick question, if I may, Nick, before we move on on Crimson. Yeah. Very much my, probably the choice of the three, so I agree with you there. But off off since June was a bit of a negative for me. Um, I know you're up to date with your reports and stuff. Have they said, said why at all? No, they, they haven't said why. It's been sold since then. It was sold in different ownership. But I just imagine this is, this is a target thing. Yeah, yeah, no, could I well just be. imagine it's a target thing. Yeah, some horse, I mean, some horses they give lots of breaks to, lots of breaks to. I think the target was Royal Ascot, and I think they bought, they sold it, and they obviously want a big target. It might not make a three-year-old, I don't know. So they might have gone, this is the target, that's it. And afterwards, uh, that's it. She's she's got she's, She'll be the paddock. Mm. A strong case made by Nick. John, what are we saying? 10-20. Friday, juvenile Phillies turf. One mile. Ooh. As we all know, in this little darling Carla's way, Willing to go out on a high this season. Sorry, I can't be doing with this. Yes. I, I just, she's got a bad hand in stall now, and she's certain to go forward. If we cast her Australia, she'll go berserk. That draw won't help. She could be five wide and lit up to fuck around the clubhouse turn. 
<laughs> um, they say I've, I've been brushing up on my Americanisms. I'm doing all things American this week. Yeah, I've, I've had nothing but burgers. I've, had, I've took money off homeless people to send to <laughs> Israel to buy cruise missiles. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> I'm all things yank. Port of Fortuna hasn't missed many dances. I think she's got about 70% of the raw ability of Carla's way, but she's, she's at least tractable and hard bitten enough. For, you know, she's a tough as nail scrapper. If she got the mail, she'd be there with a chance. Le Pavo was going to swerve the bow sack and then didn't. Now, I don't like it when the fuck about with plans and things, a bit like with Carla's way, to be honest. That, I'll add to the 14 box, has put me right off. And as a result of all this shit, I've ended up having the biggest bet I can remember having in a long term on the Breeders' Cup. I've gone with Bucko, who uh, has good, solid form on firm ground. If you watch that race back at Laurel, turning in, I think there was about a dozen of maybe 13 runners, she had one bait turning in, and then half a furlong later, she was in front. She's won that pulling up. I don't think it was a brilliant race, but Jesus Christ, she was impressive. Stays this trip standing on her head. She can be ridden handy. As I say, stays the mile, drawn in three. There's absolutely nothing to like here. I've gone ballistic each way at 10 to 1, 1.5 points each way. Fantastic case. And Magni, the bollocks will be bouncing off each knee if that, mm-hmm. if that flies in. Justify Philly. Lovely. Oh. Well, like, this is what I noticed as well when I watched the Laurel race. She's one of them beautiful moving justifies mm. that is never ever going to utter a cough about firm ground. She floats over it. Mm. Love your confidence. So, two pronged in that. Me and John. Buku for John, the big bet. And me a smaller bet on Gala Brand. So it might be worth a, an RF, a bit of an exactor. Why not? Nick loves it. Why not indeed? <laughs> right, I'll go before Jack because I want to save Jack till last because Jacks will be better than mine. But I do have a klaxon. It is with it is with Quentin Franks and it goes in the 2140 with Samara on Friday. This is my three point selection for the same reason what Quentin's pointed out at 11 to 10, except there's a few, few things he's also missed out. I did a little bit of digging on this and Pletcher who trains the second favourite Candid. He's absolutely terrible when he sends them out here in this kind of race. Now, I checked his runners in this, and out of his 15 runners in this, three only ran to form, 12 didn't. I can't have a Pletcher runner in this. He's out for me, statistically, on that. Secondly, another thing he didn't mention about the Fav, I, I think it's an incredible horse. Tomorrow overcame a dead rail to win first time out. Nothing won down the rail except this, all night. To then do what Tamara did at Del Mar, winning that grade one, I just, I, I, it was it was, it was, was mind-blowing to watch. I watched on YouTube, it was tremendous. This is a daughter of Beholder. She's fast, she's well-rested, she's on home ground. This bad work shit, I'm not having it. They don't put me off one iota. I agree with Quentin. She should be four to seven-ish. Sort of very similar opinion. And I've not spoke to Quentin either regarding this. So we're coming from the same sort of camp, obviously different reasons. Tamara, for me, Big bet. That's the banker of the two days. Get on. Smash it. Three points tomorrow, 11 to 10. Jack. To finish us off. So the 7-10 tomorrow, uh, Saturday, sorry, the Philly and Mare Turf. And uh, yeah, we've gone all Vince, Mc, Vince McMahon WWE here because I'm, I'm taking John on. I totally respect his case for Warm Heart. <clears throat> on this occasion, I was against her myself. So I'll start off with her. Um, I just think she's an out and out 12 furlong horse myself. And, and for me, you know, that some of her best performances have been on stiff 12s at that Ascot and the Ribblesdale. Um, you know, very good performance at York. And, and while she is kind of front running, clinging on at the line sort of type, <clears throat> for me, she takes a bit of time to get into her races. She doesn't break the best um, and she can be a little bit keen. And I just think things might happen a little bit too quick for her tomorrow or Saturday. And look, might be totally wrong. Hope I am in, in uh, if mine doesn't win. Um, but but I'm against her on this occasion. In Spiral, you know, look, right favourite. Will she see the trip out? She's a fizzy type, America, back end of the year. What sort of conditions is she going to be in? I can take it or leave it with her. Um, in Italian, the pace angle, as John noted, Bev Rover, solid horse. Um, 
improved out of the scaffolders yard, which isn't the biggest feat, but there you go. But I'm with the next in the market, <clears throat> and that's the uh, Brendan Walsh trained Lindy. This this three year old's had some really good form this year. She was second in the French Guineas behind uh, Blue Rose Sen, obviously multiple Group One winner. Third there was So Turn, who's won a Group One. Fourth was Kalina, who won the 4A and, and is a, a lively contender in the mile. Um, she was sold over and, and went over to the States and had her first win in a, in a maiden, uh, sorry, a claimer um, in September at. Um, uh, some shit old track, and then, and then <laughs> the key the key bit of form for me is the second last time out in uh, Keeneland in the race that Morge won. I urge everyone to go and have a watch of that race. This was nine furlongs, and she was finishing like a Comanche. If she had an extra fifty yards, she'd have won that race. And and I I personally I'm taking a leaf out of uh, Nick Davis's book here with the old related double. I think Morge is a good thing for the mile. We'll talk about that later. But mm. I rate that form, and I think she'd have won that race. And, and she's got an extra furlong here. She's a she's a type that will will sit and stalk and and then um, you know finish well into the straight. We'll we'll talk about how that kind of suits the track quite well. And I just think she's overpriced. Um, look, there's there's potential for one or two to be better than her, but I would be. Well, yeah, like John has had in his juvenile Phillies turf, I've had a, a big old each way bet here and I'd be gutted if she couldn't hit the frame. Um, so at the prices, I'm, I'm going one and a half each way, but but very confident selection on Lindy. Jack, I love that was flowing through your veins. I've been, I was... been thinking about it for about a month, Lee. It's, uh... <laughs> Absolutely. Really? I just feel that. You know, you feel when someone's really, really, really like something. Four teams. I know to leave Jack till last. And he, uh, I'll give him four pegs as well because that's... Cool. Bet 365 and Betfair Sportsbook are paying four pegs with the extra plays. What a bet. Do you know, chaps, I was really pleased with that because you've, you've got some brilliant reasoning and also some massive prices. That's what punters want. Really. Yeah, all right. We've done a clax on the 11 or 10, but everyone likes a shorty sometimes as well. You know, some people like a shorty. So we're catering for all parties here. Yeah? Clax them for a shorty and big prices for Breeders' Cup two day meat. Right. It's preview time. And we start going through the lot. Friday night, the card starts off at 9 o'clock. The Juvenile Turf Sprint over five furlongs. And Big Evs obviously heads the market after some tremendous performances in the UK. But, Nick Davis, you're against that one with Crimson Advocate. That's your selection in that. Quentin Franks is with Shards. And Jack is with Give Me The Beat Boys. So this is perfecta, trifecta, superfecta, whatever. <laughs> Stick as many, whatever. This could be a combination. I'll have my say. I think Slider is incredibly talented. But like you said, I agree about the blow in the bend bit. And the, the draw really doesn't help, which is a shame. Because if he'd just been drawn slightly better, I think I'd, I think I'd have just chucked a few quid on him at 12 to 1. You know? Just imagine if he got drawn one and he did the same, though. He'd knock them all out. <laughs> Pin it went easy. Yeah, it's like, get out of my way, bitch. <laughs> Slider, I've got a soft spot, but I think he's really, really talented. It's an exciting race for me, this one. To be honest, I thought Jack's was a good case about giving me the beat boys, but Nick, I like your case about the timing from Ascot. Mm. I didn't spot. And Quentin obviously likes Sh- oh, yeah, Shot. Yeah, yeah, I just thought, I mean, Ascot's, Ascot's very stiff, and I thought, this is... This is gonna suit Crimson far better than Big Evs with on yeah. those on those Ascot figures. John, have you did you did you have a perk at this? Uh, well, it, it's involved in the um, super hands that I've had. <laughs> <laughs> you have um, one of them, and I've, I've I've gone in with Nick actually on Crimson Advocate. I thought there was nothing between the two on the times from Ascot, whereas Crimson Advocate has actually been round the bend before at racing pace. Yeah. And I, th- I think this place is similar to Chester, really. I think if you can get out and bang the rail, you're going you're gonna to be fucking out of bait, to be honest. And uh, I think that that's what I mean. I said bang. everyone to watch the two th- last time it was in yeah. in Santa Anita. Yeah, Bang, I, both I, made all. I think if you if you can get out, you know, obviously if you, if you spunk the stairs, it's going to be tricky. But no reason to suspect this one won't get the gates running and there. Uh, but it's funny, uh, you know, as I said, over the mile trip, I mean, Law was the last one to make all in the Breeders' Cup yeah. mile, and that's 30 years ago. Uh, uh, incredible, trip. incredible. Yeah, incredible. Uh, I, I think this is, is a pretty decent horse, to be honest. I thought the Queen Mary run was excellent. I mean, it's been backed up. Well, you look a bit, Relief Rally and the you know, second yeah. and third thing, they're all rated 104, 108. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, there's not much to like about her. Uh, Picked up by the Wathnan mob, they don't miss very often, do they? Yeah, uh, she, yeah, uh, anyway, she starts me super hands off. Right, I've got an interesting stat before uh, we go on. Uh, to be honest, your, your opinions on this race supersede mine, so I'm not going to bore anyone. But I'd like to give a great stat for this meeting that I think people need to take heed of. So Breeders' Cup runners that race in California, whose race before was in New York, so New York State, or dirt only, not turf, right? This is a really great stat, I think. Out of the 138 runners in Breeders' Cup races, only 27 have run their race. Hmm. You've had a total here of, of what? So that's 111 that have bombed out. Interesting. Hmm. Mm. So there you go. This is a really good sort of way of looking at it. That, And by the way, only nine of the 138 have improved on the last effort. Mm. And that's according to like Bayer figures and stuff like that. This is good going forward. If you fancy a, a New York dirt horse, you're up against it. You, you, just, you just are. It's, it's that simple. It doesn't mean to say it can't win. It's just... Just bear that in mind, you know, especially if it might one might be sort of fancy in the market. That yeah. prob- it's probably one to avoid. Well, we're on about stats. Have you, have you got anything on shootings in the car park? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell I'll tell you tell you something. I saw blogger interviewed John Gosden in the car park yesterday, so hopefully he was one for the stats, oh, John. Good God. Do you know did, what? Did, did he still have his hand up Matt Hancock's ass working the controls? <laughs> What, blo- blogger or Gosden or both? <laughs> you, you don't play all that and not have the privilege, do you? No, he's, he's given Hancock some donations for sure. Right, John, blogger sadly could be the future of racing. Like, you can see blogger getting like an eye pitch role at some. I can, because. Would, would he have been picked up by now, though, surely? They, they must think he's just not credible. No, no because they, they, they haven't cast around for anybody yet. They'll, they'll, they'll mm. try and pick a saviour, a man of the people, somebody who can mix with the hoi polloi and uh, <laughs> take the spot forward. And he, he pretty much fits the bill. The, yeah. the love and acca lad, don't they? And. Uh, they certainly yeah, do. You, you, can say, you can say where it's all going, you know. I, yeah. I prefer the stallion, I'd rather that, them get it. Yeah. They'll, they'll, get think, it. they'll think they're buying a Mercedes or a Daimler, and they'll get it home and they'll find it stuffed with straw. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Anything to add on that before we move on? Is there any, any other runners you'd like to discuss, Jack or Nick? Anything that you've... You know? No. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Yep, I love Nick Davis, isn't it? It's, it's the best know in the game. 940 Santa Anita is the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. The big and bet from me and Franks. And honestly, I, I'm excited for this because I, I just I think she'll shit up. I really do. I just, I just think, yes, just wins 100%. Uh, any, any of you guys can put a spanner in the works for this? I don't see any point taking her on myself. Not at all, Lee. I'm going to do a Chris Paul special here. I've already backed this at nine to four. <laughs> Only Calvin S. I've had the I've had the nine to four, and you cunts can have the eleven to ten. How about that? Well, Tony <laughs> Calvin's causing waves at the moment. He's deleting his profit and loss. I mean, what's Does all he? that about? Oh. Yeah. He, he said, "I'm starting afresh because it's, oh, it's not I like fair." To do that. We should try it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I could do that with my life and man, my fucking <laughs> <cup of milk. laughs> So, any, anyone, anything to add in this? No, nope. we we have got eighty-seven-year-old Mike Smith in the saddle, Lee, to try and steer her home. Is that a problem? To be honest, I mean, Mike's rode it for uh, twice, and I mean, the thing is for me, and and Quentin makes a good point about the breeding, is that she has no right to be this good mm. over six and a half and seven. So she's got a lot of class. Because, you know, Beholder, as we know, a very good mare, really good mare, and got 10 furlough. Well, maybe didn't get 10, but certainly got the mile and one, the distaff, and got the mile and half a furlong. So I don't see any any reason why this is bombing out at all. Check the flag anyway. And it, once, once they've done it at charter trips, you know, the bread for fairly. I mean, the thing is, well, what I like, Richard Mandela's really cute at this. So th- it was a big number last time for Tamara, as Quentin yeah. pointed out, a big speed figure. But what's he done? He's not bothered to, to go again, give her eight weeks off. For me, there's no question of a bounce of a regressive figure. So Tamara is the one on board there. Then. Might, might, might say another Mandela walk to freedom then. Ten twenty Santa Anita is the juvenile Phillies turf, and obviously Carla's way at the apple of John's eye. Tell you what, right? If she wins this tomorrow night, just take anything for the guineas, anything, and I mm. mean anything. If she's five to two, just 
fucking hammer it. I'd love to see her mature a bit more and just drop the bit a bit more. If she can just drop it further mm. and just and be more amenable, I'd be like, I don't care where she finishes. I think that's more important that she. Oh, absolutely. She's but just I, learning I, to I, race I just, properly. I just think she's so fucking wrong for her. You know? Yeah, she's very talented. So, Buku uh, for John in this, Gala Brand for me. And I'd like to get the opinion here of Jack and Nick, especially in this. So where are we going, chaps, in there? Yeah, look, I'm I'm against Carla's way. I think she's the best horse in the race, but this is just not not right for her. I, I detest how uh, this mob race plan, you know, they, they've had some really good stock in the last few years and they've not had the results to justify it. I know they've got Carla's way, Van Dijk, for next year, but particularly with this one, they're doing their best job of trying to ruin her, aren't they? So, um, yeah, let's hope she, she, she runs okay, but she's not going to win this. And, um, yeah, I really like both of your cases on, on Gala Brandon and Baku here. Um, Les Pavots is, is interesting, but not from not from track 14. So I'll, I'll be happy to row him with you, boys. Good stuff. Nick, anything? Yeah, I, I'd have been with Les, Les Pavots. I mean, Brett to love this. No, no, you never have an oasis in my dream mare. She's bent to love this ground and thing, but just it's just a fourteen. If she, I might sling a couple of bullets. If she's a really, really steady price on the on the U, USA tote if I can get on somewhere. <laughs> but no, no, um, you could see a lot of things. You know, it, it's right to take a swing. I wouldn't go with the front of the market here. It's fair enough, and I, I agree what John says about Porta Fortuna as well. In the, mm. she's solid in a way because she's the professional will get the position. You could see her running well just because she'll be probably in the right place. She's like the Daisy Barlow of the thing. Isn't she? <laughs> she, not know, she, she's not a head turner, but she's a, a good solid fuck. <laughs> <laughs> End of the night job if, if there's nothing yeah. better. Oh. Yeah, one of them where oh. there's like only three left dancing around the handbags <laughs> and yeah. everyone else has got her on. Yeah. Right, 11 o'clock is the, the Fan Jewel Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Thoroughbred, af- I thought you said After Time Alliance. I thought Chris Paul was in there. Aftercare <laughs> Alliance. A grade one, of course. And Jack lost- preempting me, eh? A man up just says, no, fuck all about that. He's just back dirty Bob Bassett. <laughs> Jack's obviously made an excellent case for Prince of Monaco. This is why I'm liking tonight's show, because there are some really good, strong cases for some prices as well. I do think the favourite Locked is quite solid, chaps. I mean, have, any views on Locked? No, I, think, I, don't, I think Baffert, Baffert dominates this pace, doesn't he? Wind me up, goes in the thing. Prince of Monaco slots in behind him, and that's going to be that's going to be the domination. General Barton might go forward on the outside. I can, you know, it's a bap at one, two somewhere here, isn't it? The reason why I, I thought that Locke was good, because I, I just think he had such a tough trip last time uh, watching the race. He was like four wide, four wide. and uh, He's going to be four wide here. <laughs> well, that's it. But it, again, it sort of caught my eye, but it would do it. It's seven or two, so I'm not really saying anything. I thought my conclusion on this really... Do you know what? I, I, I'm coming to your way of thinking. I, I know you're not keen maybe at the prices. But I think at the prices, I can probably leave this, but locked, I think, is the most solid, but just just puts me off with the, with, with the draw. Etc. One for your, your stats here, Lee. So Timberlake, who I alluded to in my preview, um, his last win was a... Uh, a four and a half length sloppy demolition at Belmont in New York. So, you know, I was against him anyway, but that stat you gave me has certainly reinforced that. Mm, there you go. All right. So, interest. John, anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, anything to add further to add? No, no, no. <laughs> I just wanted no. to say it. I just wanted him to say it. 1140 is the juvenile turf. They obviously the best. Race on the card in terms of two year old races this evening. I think you're not going to argue about the dirt, but River Tiber heads the market at five to two. Jack, have you had some anti purse interest on River Tiber? Oh, I'm getting Chris Paul tonight, aren't I? I, I <laughs> to, to be fair, you guys, I did put this in our chat a few weeks ago and I said he looks overpriced. I can't remember what it was, tens, twelves, or something, but I have backed that. I, I certainly wouldn't at five to two, um, mm. but he's the right favourite for me for sure. Can you just outline to listeners what price you've got again? Well, oh, twelve to one. <laughs> was this in your article on Patreon? It wasn't, no, because I was um, looking at you, it pissed at you, the train station, and it looked quite good. But uh, you I disgraceful didn't man! You disgraceful oh, man! I know, I know. Poor Patreon subscribers. They get nothing out of us, do they? So River Tiber, Jack doing the trumpets with his prices, and he's up in this run's array. I felt in this endlessly had a chance. 
Yeah, I thought he ran very well on his second start, and he and he improved on that last time. And I think on the numbers, etc. I don't think there's nothing not to like about endlessly. I think at the prices, that's that's one to look at. I think River Tiber is probably the best of the Europeans. In fact, I'll I'll, I'll say this now. I think River Tiber is probably the best chance of an Aidan O'Brien winner this weekend, in my opinion. I'm not so certain he'll do very well this meet, but I think that's the best chance. John? I can't believe you said that after you had him all going round in that single line the other day. <laughs> <laughs> that, that took some coordinating. Yeah, well. River Tiber, I mean, he's got, he's got a lovely draw. Could, he could be better for even quicker ground than he's encountered the, well, the last twice. Last twice. He had a nice mid-season break, which you'd probably feel the benefit for here. The trip would be the worry for me. Uh, he's hardly finished his six furlong races off, like he's gagging for a mile, I don't think. As I say, he's got the sort of draw where Ryan can lock him up and still stay handy, so I, I, I don't know, I think he's priced right. Unquestionable as look as old mile would suit him, I think. Eight bucks? I don't know, really. Carson's run wouldn't be far behind the Aiden Ortiz on the figures. Stall 14 puts me off completely. Endlessly, I'd give a chance to out the nine box. But the one I've actually backed is Can Group, who runs out the four box. Might just have enough improvement in it to shake these up. He steers this trip pretty well. Won't have to be locked away. As winning form on firm ground. And I think the fact that the Opening the, the track up, I mean, they've had a running rail in until tomorrow, and I think that there might be a little bit bias favouring the inside initially. So I think I think the four box could be a bit of an advantage for Can Group, and the fact that he stays so well, I think that will seem place at least. Mm, decent price, yeah, around the 16 to 1 mark. Nick, Jack, anything to add on this before we wrap up Friday? This is going to be a messy race. There's only one bit of one lone pace. My boy Prince is a real lone pace in here. Carson's runner, you know, he's drawn 14. If you look last time, after a slow po- I saw a slow poke, he came five wide and still beat them all. I think yeah. unquestionably he'll be in the ro- My Philly beat Carson's run, the, the uh, Gala yeah. brand, if you, yeah, yeah. Unquestionably he's going to be in the right place. I don't know how they're going to ride River Tybe yet, but I can see lots of trouble. There's not steering pace. There's one lone pace, I think, and unquestionably be in the right place. Carson run could if he comes from behind. He, he that was that was it really impressed me that slow run race. He came he came five wide and still beat a lot of them. But uh, I probably won't be having a player. Right? Do, do you think stepping up from six to a mile is going to suit River Tiber? Given that there will be a slow pace and River Tiber's not a, one of them key. Where's he going to be? In, where's he going to be in the field? He, he should be in a lovely position from trap two. He should just be able to just slot in, and even if they go. Even if somebody does go quick, he can handle that because he's been running over six all his life. He is obviously bred for further than six, given the pedigree. I just think the two-turn Santa and eat a mile will suit River Tiber. I'm not saying anything at five to two. I'm just trying to get Jack Pecker up for his <laughs> 12 to one. Hey. I'm ready up me this weekend. Hey. Uh, ready, ready to roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack's got the crown jewels there. We move on to Saturday. This is where the real action takes place. And of course, we start off with the very brilliantly named oh. Big Ass, Big Ass <laughs> Fans Breeders Cup Dirt Mile. My lady, you got a big fat ass <laughs> as we start off Saturday's proceedings in the IDV4 uh, opener with Cody's Wish, no less. The brilliant story of Cody's Wish, of mm. course, that's ruined by the Sam Raps by buying it. <laughs> then, then you just go, oh. what a fantastic story behind that. And of course, this horse hasn't looked as good, chaps, this season. But is this just preps for this, really? Then positive work reports, has not it? Yeah. I, I was like proper desperate to take him on here. I know Nick was more than me, but sadly, mm. I think we got a good weekend in store. But this this race looked shit, to be honest. It did. Really shit. Yeah, I thought my my, my exact of one died and one done its hoof in, so. Mm. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> sore. That's how most of mine go, that, Nick. Yeah. So, uh, no, I, th- I don't think Zoz Z- 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 is good enough to lead it. I don't think he's good enough to win it. It's as if, if Cody's wish. I mean, Zosis is going to get a is going to get a soul up front. If he wins it, it'll be a bad one. Probably a race to sit out. But John, what you think? What do you think? It, it just looks like the sort of race to 
show it up everybody's dirt mile, doesn't it, really? So. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the race where we kick the night off on ITV4? And... It's going to be a rough night, isn't it? I mean, you might, might as well have Spaniel in for half an hour. Yeah, we, 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 yeah, get pay, we, we pay it out, yeah. Get nice and relaxed, you know. I'll yeah, read. Spread, spread it, spreading it out, yeah. Lighten the, lo- lighten the load a bit. <laughs> I'll rename this one the, the Ed Chamberlain Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile because he's got a story here, hasn't he, if uh, if the Fav wins. If... There'll be stories galore. Mm. They'll, they'll do this one to death. I um, bet they bring Cody's... somebody out on a drip on Saturday night. We'll find somebody <laughs> on a drip. Probably the kid. Probably the kid. This one's named after. Bless him. <laughs> right. Do you know before we do that? So, right. The, the the US coverage is is superior quality to, 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 to the UK. Yeah. Good, isn't it? But they do. They're the same as ITV. They do like a story. But what impresses me about the US is in between each race is the in depth things they do. They interview most of the trainers. A lot of the owners. Lot of the so you get to know the characters, whereas UK racing don't. It's a bit like, oh, let's go to Jason Weaver, let's go to. It's, it's one for you boys on Sunday, but this will be an indication. You know, you talk about all these fucking initiatives that we try and do and influencers promoting the sport. You see how these boys promote the racing with proper sectionals, with betting chat. You know, that's how you promote the sport, but but they won't definitely. Do it. They won't do it. I, I, no. I tell you what, all, all them zaboon heads down at High Hub, I won't even be thinking of comparing them to me. Here comes the next deletion on pods. They love a deletion at BHA. Uh, so the 710, the breed... Is that the offensive, makers... the boneheads? Yeah, but I don't know. They'll find anything Naboon. offensive. You just said last time you ate these fuckers and that, that was it. And... <laughs> In a phrase, they should look better. Yeah, they won't listen to this one. It's not a sermon. It's a ticket yeah. show. They don't, they don't like that shit. They don't, they, they don't like betting. They don't want betting. Yeah. 710 Santa Anita. <laughs> the Breeders' Cup filly and mare and turf. First question to you, chaps, because I know you've obviously got tips in it. Obviously, Jack's massive on the Brendan P. Walsh trained Lindy. Jonas likes warm heart. But will in spirals stay? That's the question the punters want to know. Red I would I wouldn't want to back her and find out, to be honest. Mm. I'd, I'd let her go. Um, well, she? I, I really to change them. You know, like where it says, like the hillside track. Is that the one where they start in the in the shoot just off the track? Yeah, yeah. They um, they used to they used to have the turf sprint there up there before. Yeah, it disgracefully oh, moved to five furlongs. Uh, oh, it was crazy that turf sprint, weren't it? On the, on that on oh, that yeah. on that on that on that course, that was brilliant. Well, yeah. well yes, didn't it? Trainers, I see that. Quite you, you see some great bloody. If you watch the 2007, 2008, when three of them went at it, I think about about 20.22 for the first the first quarter, mm-hmm. and that was the one where Saint come from the clouds and won. Davis, does in Italian get an easy lead, and does in spiral stay? If Fev Rover hadn't been there, I think it would have got an easy lead. Fev Rover yeah. will go along with it. In Italian has got the, I mean, don't forget, in Italian, mostly a mile. It nearly pinched this race last year for, with, with Tuesday, but don't forget, it's an extra furlong this time as well. I'm really with Jack on this and Lindy. I'm really oh, oh. I'm really, you know that? I'm going to top up, Nick. It nearly made my list. And Warm Heart was the only one. I mean, I probably play this race. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play this race as a reverse forecast. Those two. You say you say in Lindy, Nick, there was like me getting a gift of three walnut whips. It's my favourite <laughs> gift of all time. Christmas gift, a uh, pleasure. So if you want to send twenty boxes to Barstow's HQ as thanks for this year, do it. Send me loads of walnut whips. Hint, hint. I love Jack's case, and to be honest, I was just looking at like in running angles with like in, in Italian stuff like that. But now you put me off, Nick, with you're saying February over my fuck it up. Jonas, obviously you're strong on warm art, but are you thinking like Lindy as well? Maybe after listening to Jack, I remain perfectly relaxed about my warm heart position. To be honest, <laughs> I, I genuinely think we see some improvement for this trip in a strongly run race. This is it then. So it could be a bit of forecast going here. Nick loves his exotics at these meetings. Nick's right. Nick's an article's on this, and if you land one, it's just it, 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 yeah, it can be. Not saying life changing money, but you can certainly like pay pay for the, a few months' bills getting a good one up. Nothing more to say on that, chaps. Nope, nope. Yeah. Right, seven fifty then. Go to the Philly and Mare Sprint, sponsored by PNC Bank. Good night, Olive. 
is a very short price favourite. I think she's a prime bounds candidate, if I'm honest. I think she's had some very hard races. The last two, for me, have been hard races for her. And I thought she could be taken on. So anyone want to lead off here? She's not got a great draw either. She's in one. I think the clearly unhinged all leader, Edna all, all leader. Society will go forward and it's whether she gets hassled on the lead too much. If she doesn't, she'll just draw away from these and good night, Olive will not get out in time. Interesting. Yeah, sounds a bit confident from Nick on society. I was keen, Nick, to take on the faff. I was wondering what everyone thought on this. Jack, did you did you have an opinion on this? No, I'm happy to agree with Nick on that one. Um, no, no strong opinions from me. Yeah, I was just looking to take on the fab. John, yeah. you? Mm, not a clue. <laughs> That's what we absolutely love on this show. Right, move on. 8.30, it's the Fan Duel Breeders' Cup Mile. Yes, decent race this. I've tipped up Songline for the Japs. It'll be, it'll go off one to three on their turn. <laughs> <laughs> it actually will. They'll bet this to oblivion. If we all had any sense, we'd send somebody out to Japan and just say, right, what do you want to back this at when, they see it, when they're backing it into... Stupid prices on whatever pull they're betting on. And I'll I'll lay I'll lay some five to two and then we can just all lay it off at seven or two. Aye aye. That's the good old days when Bucky's used to go to long chomp. Song line then for me at seven or two. Morge, I heard some mutterings from you, Jack. Hmm. You think Morge is a good thing. I do, I do. Um I'm basing that on my Lindy selection really, so I need this one to to go right, but Look, I think combination of... I think she's a really tough filly. You know, you look at the Guineas win against Tahira, that win last time out, um, and the juice, mainly the juice um, for me. I think I think she's prepped well. Um, she's drawn in the right place. Master of the Seas, I just give no no hope there from 14, even though it's, it's not the strongest pace in fairness, but too much trouble to contend with. And you know what? I actually really appreciate nick's choice shell spate um so mm. i'm gonna i'm gonna go all nick davis and say reverse forecast those two yeah go get it mm. in with the french one for a, for a bit of trifecta action oh, as well love it god i can't believe you lot this in the japs they, they're cleaning up like you've never known it's david bryant at the bowls like in in the eight he just used to piss all over every david bryant turns up at crown green he always seemed to get beat when i was watching him yeah, that's when he didn't have his pipe, John. Yeah, well, honestly, every time you put the telly on, you say, oh, here he is, David Bryant, fantastic <laughs> and all this. And then some fucking all over and stuff him. Yeah, you ever yes. have, anyone had a bet on the bowls before? Can you can you bet on it? Well, you, you used to be on I mean, you can't bet on out these days. But I mean, I'll tell you what I love, I love betting on. I love betting on one man and his dog. Do you remember? I used to love watching that. Wow, Phil Drabble and Phil Drabble was unflappable. Wow. You you get this dog and you get some really awkward sheep. Yeah. <laughs> you got some awkward sheep, and the That's... dog be going mad. The sheep been running around with jaw drabbles and oh, he's got an awkward bunch. That's ten <laughs> out of ten for the shed. Yeah. <laughs> enough enough reminiscing. So Davis and Beecher against the Jack. Terrible from them two, really uh, disrespecting the the, the Jack. J- John, your opinion. Well, if the Jap gets beat on Saturday night, probably 18 months later, we were watching somebody in the Japanese hillside with a built-in Watco in its small intestine. Um, <laughs> It'll be on Takeshi's Castle, that trainer, won't yeah, it, if he loses it? Uh, <laughs> rural Japan. Um, I'm back Kalina, and the reason why... I think her first crack on proper quick ground could bring some action about here. She's an oasis dream mare. I don't see anything in her action to be frightened about the quick ground. I don't think the, the draw's the end of the world either. I, I don't know what the fuck to make of Marge, because this has really stumped me while, while they've been working on the dirt track. I just don't get it. Unless they're a bit windy about her on firm turf. I don't know. I can't have Master of the Seas drawn wide. So I've, I've gone fairly solid on Kalina each way. To... Yeah, she's interested. I mean, look, what price is Kinross in this? Obviously, would be probably a decent price given firm ground. But when you consider that Kalina... I mean, like, on quickish ground last year, didn't he? You know I mean? Yeah, well, well. You know what? Very tough. 
I'd love to see Kalina next year in the Platinum Jubilee at Royal Ascot. Stiff six. I think she'd be perfect for that. Travels really nicely. I think soft mile here will will be fine. But I, I think she could shape. I, I know she's a Frankel, but um, yeah, she she could be she could be a real live player if they're a bit ambitious next year. Like the opinions there varying, which is good. That's what we want. Punters will listen and side with what they also agree with. The Breeders' Cup well, distaff is... Them that don't like one man and his dog and prefer the sound <laughs> Well, well, we have some comments on our shows. Everyone loves going off on tangents. So, so the, the nine ten is the uh, Breeders' Cup this staff, and mm. this one in particular is. I honestly, I have no opinion here whatsoever. I I know, this is that. this is pure pace war, isn't it? This is pure. Yeah. This this was my last year. It was my nightmare. I had a my manifest Clarier reverse wall cast. Yeah, and first and third beaten by a nose. This is a, this is war. Automatic, a manager, randomised. They all go out in front. Um, oh, this is going to be this is going to be mad. This is going to break. Uh, I'm probably going to have Claria reverse with pretty mischievous wet paint. Uh, have a closers, and then someone will say it's a shocker. He's blown up the tote board. <laughs> <laughs> but this is pace. This is pace. They'll go. They'll go through whizzing through here like like oh. Yeah. So you're saying closer, Nick. Closes, yeah, it's a pace war. Jack, I'm pleading the fifth in this one, Lee. Yeah, you like me? I've, I've <laughs> sat this. Before. John, by the finish of this, it'll be like quarter past one of a Saturday morning in Leeds when all the lackeys are splattered on the pavement, eating what's left of the kid babs. <laughs> um, Greek street. I'm bugging if I know what's going to come through and pick up the prize, so let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on from that indeed. 9.50 is the Breeders' Cup turf, over a mile and a half. August Day Rodan heads the market 11-4, Mossadaf 3-1. Mossadaf is where I was at as a selection, but, but August Day Rodan, I've always said, does point his toe. I think possibly the faster the ground, the better for August Day Rodan. That's how I see him, and I've seen him like that since the start of the season. So whether he's blowouts this year when people said, well, he blows out, you know, was it due to unsuitable conditions? Obviously, Ascot he blew out in. You know, it was it was softer than good, and he blew out Newmarket in, in in bad ground at the start of the season. The rest of the form, he's unbeaten. He won the Derby, he won the Irish Derby unimpressively, albeit, and he beat Luxembourg in the Irish Champion, albeit the race was set up. So, chaps. I'd like your opinion on this, Jack. For me, Lee, I've been taking August Rodan on all year, so I can't be a hypocrite and change my mind today. Um, mm. Look, he's got, he'll have a nice pace set up. He's got his two mates in there. For me, I, I just don't like these horses that rely on stable mates to, to carry them through a race. It just takes the shine off them for me. So I can't be with him. Mostadaf, best horse in the race, worst yeah. jockey. Couldn't yes. could, could, just could just, <laughs> I couldn't like nine fifty on a Saturday night. I couldn't put myself through the heart. The heart. You're right. You're totally right. <laughs> King of Steel. I'm just going to place lay it. It's terrible, terrible placing. Arrogant owner wants his big day in the sun. That will come last. You know, look at the race. Forty eight hands. Look at the race he's had a couple of weeks ago. That that was I know, tough. I know. That was tough. So not for me. I like Nick's Ernesto. To give an alternative, I think um, Shari Yar. If he's a, he's a pace angle, he's, I know one box is the coffin box and all that, but look at the way he won the, was it the Shima Classic last year? Yes. Mm. Um, when beating Yibir. I, I struggled to see him out the frame. I think he'll just sit on that rail, swing along. Um, and I think he, you know, I know I know, I dissed the Japs in the last one, but I'll give it, give their credit here. I think he's interesting. Yeah, terrible from you dissing in the last one. Now you're back <laughs> on side with the Jap. The yeah. Jap, yeah, right, the Jap, I could see, honestly, I could see the Japs having a really good meeting here. Stick them all in, but, a, in a Yankee or something. You, yeah, it's one of them. Man. You know, like for, for punters, like if you, like Nick, Nick made a column on, on Patreon. Yeah, like Yankee, if you do about, well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, true. It'd be a Heinz Ramen, wouldn't it? Or something like that. <laughs> yeah, be a Ramen. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but Nick did an article on Patreon about about following certain angles, and if you like certain things, maybe just stick the Japanese in 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 tricksies and stuff like. That. Because listen, if if they're having the carrots, then yeah, they could all just set fire like they did in Maida, and and you're sick afterwards because you think, well, 
we know this. We know they, they're doing well on raiding parties. They have done Cox play, as we've, as we've commented. Instead um, of having a young, young Jack, you'd have to have a rising sun. You don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So expand on this, Nick Davis. I've already given my reasoning back and back and one asto. I think the King of Steel's too big a too too big a horse. I don't think he'll like it around here. No. Mustard F, I, he's he's got to be held up. He'll he'll be held up with Jim and that'll spend trouble. And old Gus Rodan, I can let win at that price. Uh, up to the mark is not up to the mark. Uh War Norris Warlike Goddess. Bolshoi Bally will be leave for a while and give a nice August Rodine get smoking or lead up for there for well, we've seen now he's he's been pulled out now, hasn't he? Or Broom might lead up oh, anyway. Uh and Esto will come and mow them down. Like it. Yeah, no, as I said, you know, I just wanted to rest because I, I like your your take on, on, on the fancy ones in the market. John. Mustard F. The only issue away really for me is Jim. But Jim's mm. not good enough for stuff like this. No. I think Gosden would have preferred a local lad for the job, given given the choice. Give Cap Blanche. I, I couldn't be back with him. If King of Steel won this, I think I'd go out and buy myself a Clydesdale and win the Lily Agnes with it in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> August Rodan's good when he's pretty good. Two bomb outs in four races. Massive worry, really. Hard to fathom how they might ride him here as well. I, I don't know whether they drop out and let the other two drag everybody else in, but for me, I think Nick's called it spot on. And this store, if you watch the art back, he was finishing as fast as the winner. The, the mm. distance between him and the winner never altered, whereas the, the winner was clearing away from everybody else. They were, they were just both blowing past the field. The thing was, the winner's in front, and he's about fourth, wasn't he? I, I, I think on his day, I think he's very good at And I think he's a, he's a fair price and he features in the Super Hines. Super Hines for John. 1040 Santa Anita is the Breeders' Cup Classic. Arabian Nights that Quentin Franks had a tip for on debut. We didn't share it with anyone. It, it wasn't really worth sharing, was it? I mean, I think some of us managed. What did we manage? What price did we get Arabian Night on debut, Chris Paul? I think we, I think I backed him eleven to eight, six to four, or something. It was, it was yeah, it was, yeah, it was something like yeah, it went off, went off like sort of really short. And we told it we, we all the group one silver, silver haired Bob horses, and it's eleven to four five. But it's very opposable for from this draw, chaps. That it's got to be. We, we can't go with Arabian Night here, can we? Eleven to four. Oh, well, I did tip this one up, didn't I, Patreon? <laughs> you did, yeah, you did. Yeah, well. Yeah. What price did you tip it up uh, at? I think six is general, so I can't be accused of after time in here. But I Jack, you're to... a swine. You're a price. Uh, I had to. I had to. Uh, when I saw that draw, I was. I was very, very disappointed. To be honest, um, I think again, I'm, I'm going back to to the boys that don't like me. I think the Jap in here is very interesting. Um, winning the Dubai World Cup. And, so you've dipped and... my Jap, and you've gone with the Jap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. Um, yes, that'd be a good name. A good name for a horse, wouldn't it? Dis my chap. <laughs> would you get that get that one through with a BHA? Yeah, that'd get through, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, probably would. Probably would. This one's you'd... had a bit of a this one's had a bit of an issue with stalls if you've been watching Mike yes, Walsh recently. They they've given some that. barrier things. Mm. It all depends here, I mean it, um, I think it, I think Saudi crowns the key to this race, how yeah, how it goes with, with with Arabian Night. What what pace they go early? I think that's gonna. This gonna. All the race is gonna depend on this. What their what their their two lots of sectionals are. I think this I mean, this, this depends on race. Uh, f- for me, White Barrier, uh, Richard Dutra and Irad Ortiz. If that runs its race that it did last time out, it just wins. Simple as. I mean, it, it just it blitz Zandon Curdy's wish, charred it. Giant game, he absolutely just destroyed them. What we're saying about that, yeah, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't knock it, Lee. Um, I, you know, given my position in the in the race, I'll be looking to, to try and get some savers on. And I think White Barrio and, and Ushba Tesoro probably for me. White Barrio has got like a real sexy profile for me. I just think, I mean, the amount of times they sort of non runnered it this year, they like pulled it out in April, they pulled it out twice in May. It was. It was like it's like a mm. I don't know as if as if he's had some kind of problems and then it ran in June then it pissed up in August and the fact that he's had this amount of break again 
suggests that maybe it's a bit fragile. I mean, and and that's why I think they're going with. It's like a bit like Mostadaf. We we saw with Mostadaf that he's got to have like a couple of months off before you run him again, and and he's unbeaten when you do that. And I think this horse is the same. I, I think this horse now has become a horse that that needs a needs a bit of a bit, bit you know a, a bit of time off. And and I think I think it could just be that. So I, I thought his form was up there uh, to win this. Do we think this is a shit breeders' cup classic? Probably. I'll tell you, tell you a bit of a long shot here who I think might run a race. Do you remember George Bowie's missed the cut who was snuck in here as the, yes. uh, as the rag? Um, he's been off it on, on most of his appearances in the States, but I thought pissed up last time out. Um, I think it took a bit of a while to settle yet, to be honest. I, I, I give him a bit of a shit out there. Yeah, but big odds. Six, it can't, cannot be 66ers. No. Well, You've got a winner out here, so basically he's based out here. That that I think again, it's, I think it's such an edge on dirt mm. that you're in California, and it, like you say, he's building up time, and he's got better. His last two starts, he ran a belter at Del Mar, bit keen, and then that I think that's his problem. But then absolutely shit up last time. Well, you yeah, know, on me, you know. He's just racing probably to race on dirt and do it the right way. But 66ers, he's an absolute insult. Because if this had been a vintage Breeders' Cup year, you'd have just gone uh, classic. You'd have just gone, no, 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 no. But, but it's not. It's far from it. And 66ers, I think, warrants some attention. Uh, Nick Davis? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm taking a rain check on this race for, for betting purposes. I mean, I really think it's just down to the pace. So I'll, 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 I'll have a watch. I won't play. I was going to play the. I would have played the, the uh, Japanese Raider, but the start of the week is about nine to one. Yeah, he's interesting because the Maidan win when he beat Algiers, that is ridiculously strong form. Mm. You know, mm. I mean, I mean, Jack fancied Algiers dirt mile, and sadly Algiers has been withdrawn. Probably juice hasn't worked, Jack. They've stuck the juice <laughs> in, and it's like it's got ill from it. Hasn't it? Giving it to Carla yeah. instead. Yeah, probably only going up for one of them. I'm with White Arabi- Abario and Ushba Tesoro, the Japanese against the Fav in the Breeders' Cup Classic. 11.25 is the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. We can't have lived the dream at 7 or 2. Surely Batman doesn't win the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint, chaps. No, no. I'm with John here. I, Caravel nearly made it onto my list as well. I'd have a... My forecast would be... In this race, Caraval, bigger invasion, Caraval, Motorious. Those are my two, there's my one, two. Caraval over those two, two straight forecasts. Well, I'm with John here in terms of if you've lived the dream, living the dream wins the turf sprint. We are buying Hydesdale to win a Lily Agnes, aren't we, John? <laughs> I think that's a fair show. Jack? Yeah, no, I'd agree. I can't have him winning. And a, a moan from me obviously tipped Emirati Anna in this race and they didn't declare uh. him. Sold, sold it to Jamie Osborne. What, what's he going to do with that? Run it Lingfield in Feb or something? I mean, uh, he'd probably get down if get down to eighty three and win yeah. a, no eighty two and win a class four. Yeah, he'll I mean, get thirty five uh, points in next year's racing league. For yeah, Safi, yeah. Get down to eighty two and he'll turn up in a racing league for Safi. Get backed off the boards from tens into five to two, and he'll go ha oh, show his teeth and and say, "Oh, that was good placing, wasn't it?" <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be that. 11.59 Santa Anita. It's the finale, thank God. Qatar Racing Breeders' Cup Sprint. Elite Power is the favourite, and we've already said in this that the Elite Power might not get the pace uh, to run at Speedboat Beach for our Quentin Franks. Uh, he's strong on that. So I'm interested here because, uh, Nick, Jack, you any view on this? I'm with Quentin myself. Um, I've been... After Nick put us on to the to the Mike um, is it Mike Hirsch Mike Welsh stuff, yeah. uh, the work reports have been really positive for this speedboat beach. And I actually listened to Big Bad Bob a couple of weeks ago on uh, Nick Luck, and he he said this was up there with one of his best chances. So yeah, I get Quentin's case, and and I think I think there's reasons to take on the Fav here for me. Raw, oh, I like that. Agreeing what with you, Speedboat Beach. 
11 or 2. I think you get sixes in a place. Yep. The sixes we uh, lab brooks. Six hundred yeah. quid to get us back level then, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> about about that, I think. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So so Quentin does make a good case for that. So Nick, John, anything to add to that? No. Not really. I didn't have a lot of you in there. I thought uh, it's Doctor Shivel and now we're on uh, non runner. Now that must be yeah. pulled out a couple of lists. It looks that way, doesn't it? On the betting. Um, yeah, that that would have been one. That's uh, that's out now. Bloody hell! There's, there's so many. There's been someone with late like withdrawals this year, hasn't there? The juice hasn't been administered. Well, well Caravel's last leg in my super hands, and if that's gone in, went sprint, dirt sprints getting run, telly will be in swimming pool. <laughs> 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 I think that sums it up. Uh, so thank you to Patron subscribers for with your uh, commitments. And you get it first, of course, uh, this evening. And it will go free to air on Friday as normal for normal folks. That's all from us. We've enjoyed it. Me, John, Nick and Jack. Bye for now.